What's up, what's up? Here we back. You can't play a boxing podcast. Episode 22. Wow. Man, we made it to the end of the year. Hope Number one, we want to send uh, happy holidays out to everybody enjoying the Christmas holidays, New Year's, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all the holidays, you know. Spend time with your families, um, you know, recharge, get ready for 2020. We headed to a new decade, so we got a lot to be blessed for just to, just to even see this decade coming up. Um, beyond that, you know, like I always say, every episode, check us out on Instagram at You Can't Play Boxing. That's U C A N T P L A Y B O X I N G. Um, on Instagram, you can also email us at You Can't Play Boxing at gmail.com. So, wow, man, you know, we got a lot of things that's happened end of the year uh, a lot of boxing has happened even over the last week since our last episode um but before we get into that you know i'm a big hip-hop head so one of the things that's been happening in this past couple weeks a lot of new music popped off um i've been just checking out a few albums um my man currency came out with a new album um back at bernie's i checked that out last night and uh it's pretty dope. I like the track he got with uh, him and Dolph, man. That's really, that track is really doing something for me. Dolph, Dolph goes off on there, you know what I'm saying? So, like that. Uh, he also got another track, I think, Money Is My Drug, I like that. And then he got another one with um, Made in Tokyo that I like too. So, check out Currency's album, Back at Bernie's. Uh, I think Cameron came out Purple Haze 2. I haven't checked that out yet, but I'm going to check it out sometime soon. Um... Another person who I uh, checked out as far as a new album uh, is uh, Sauce Walker. He came out with a new album. Sauce Walker, if you don't know, he out of Houston. Uh, he came out with a sequel to his album from last year, which is uh, Ghetto Gospel. This is called Ghetto Gospel 2. He got a track on there with Travis Scott that's pretty dope. Uh, one with Lil Kiki that's dope. Then he got this track called uh, Where Was You At? That shit is fire, so um, check out that album, too. Uh, Gucci Mane came out with something, too. It's a lot of music, man. Uh, and also, At The Bay, S-O-B-R-B-E, um, they dropped something, too. So, yo, a lot of new music. A lot of new music. So, uh, let's get into the boxing, though. First things first, we had a big card last night. We had um, Charlo versus Harrison which is a great fight. We're going to talk about that in a little second, in a few seconds. Um, also, in the co-main event, you had the uh, F.A. Hajaba, you know what I'm saying? Um, big heavyweight, you know what I'm saying? It fights in, out of Texas, um, but he's from, I think, Nigeria or something. So we'll talk about that, too. But the big thing, too, happened was um, Brian Kenny. Brian Kenny, <laughs> he interviewed Errol Spence and... Uh, from what you know, from what it looks like, Brian. If you don't know Brian Kenny, you know he started off at ESPN, big boxing guy. He works with his own now, and I think Fox PBC is paying him. I don't know if it's a permanent thing, but he's on Fox PBC, um, handling some duties, maybe temporarily. But Brian Kenny is known as a he's a in your face interviewer. So he interviewed uh, Errol Spence last night and that was Errol Spence's first interview since he had his accident and uh Brian Kenny now number one Errol Spence had an accident in October he uh was drunk driving unfortunately was it what appears drunk driving I don't know for a fact but it appears he was drunk driving he's charged with it um he flipped out of his car. His car flipped like two, three times. He, he's lucky to be alive, number one. So I'm, I'm happy that he's still alive. Because it could have went a different way. With Brian Kenny, he uh, interviews Errol Spence. And he starts asking questions about, were you drinking? Were you doing this? I'm like, well, number one, Errol Spence can't answer those questions because he's right now he's being charged. But he kept kind of going in on those charges on those allegations and he should have just kind of backed off after the couple times but 
Uh, <laughs> that's Brian Kenny for you, man. Um, um, another thing is that we did find out Errol Spence, you know, he started training again, so he don't have any long-term effects from what, from what he says. Um, he expects to start boxing again in the summertime, summer 2020. And he says that um, he, he plans on fighting, you know, Danny Garcia or, you know, um, Manny Pacquiao. Uh, Danny Garcia fights in January and Errol Spence was supposed to fight him um, originally, but it appears that that fight is not going to happen. And um, it's not going to happen in January anyway. So we're going to uh, see how that goes. What happened to my music, though? What happened to my music? What happened to my music? We're trying to get this right. <laughs> but um, sorry for that. My music went somewhere. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So, um, L. Smith's plan on, plans on fighting my, my either Danny Garcia in um, May or June, but he also wants the Pacquiao fight. And you know, I've always said Pacquiao should not fight Errol Spence because he's too big. But if I'm Pacquiao, if Errol Spence fight is going to make me the most money. And if I'm ever going to fight Errol Spence, wouldn't I do it after he's coming off of a, at that point, it's going to be like a nine month layoff and an accident and him recuperating. This is going to be my lowest risk if possible versus him and highest reward. And who knows, I might even beat him. And then I even submit my legacy even more. And if I lose, I was supposed to lose to him anyway. I passed the torch. I made the most money. So I've always said that Pacquiao should not take the fight because Errol Spence is a beast and a monster, but that beast and a monster has been injured. And if you ever going to take the fight and if it's the most money out there, I say, why not take it? This if you're going to take if you're not if you're not going to ever fight him, then, hey, don't worry about it. But if you ever have any inclination that you're going to fight him, this is the best time to do it. Uh, so we, we'll see how it goes. But I'm, I'm happy Errol Spence is um, he's not injured uh, permanently. He plans on fighting in the summer and um, there should be some big fights coming up. And uh, also last week we had a big fight. Speaking of Errol Spence, you know, a lot of times talk about Errol Spence, talk about the, we talk about the number two guy. In the welterweight division, some people have him as number one guy in the welterweight division. But talk about Keith, not Keith there. I'm sorry, Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford had a big fight last week in New York against Mean Machine. And I'm sorry, last week, you know, I was kind of like just calling him the mandatory and all that. And don't get me wrong, I said Terrence Crawford's gonna win, but the fight was a lot more. It was a lot more difficult than people thought. Number one. <laughs> Regardless of what happened and what was officially done, Mean Machine dropped Terrence Crawford in the second round. They, they ruled it a slip, but that was a drop. He dropped him. So get that out the way. Uh, mean Machine, he was into the fight. I say he had, it was a good even fight until about round five, round six. Round, round six, I saw Terrence Crawford pick up the pace and starts to really impose himself. And he was like, hey, after that drop, look, man, if I'm going out, I'm going out like this. I'm not going out, you know, I'm not going out any other way. And um, he, he basically started tagging me, Machine, and he did a lot of stuff that, uh, that he uh, needed to do. And, you know, um, he picked up the pace and he started, he won the fight on, in the ninth round, you know, as a TKO, so... So, uh, you know, it's a big, it was a good showing for me, Machine. He's tough as nails. He has some skill to him, too. But Terrence Crawford, it kind of, you know, reinforced some things. I've always said that Terrence Crawford is a, is a dog, and he showed his dog mentality in that fight, which means that, you know, when it comes down to it, he's not going out 
without biting down and fighting, you know what I'm saying? Which is a good thing and a bad thing. A good thing is that he gonna bring a fight. The bad thing is that he leaves himself open a lot. And I think against a guy like Errol Spence, that's gonna be hard. That's gonna be bad for you because Errol Spence is naturally a bigger fighter. Um, against a guy like Sean Porter, you know, and they've been talking about the Sean Porter Terrence Crawford fight. That would be a good style matchup because Sean Porter fights like a dog. Terrence Crawford is a dog. I would like to see that. You know, um, that would be a good fight. So Terrence Crawford, you know, he um he did what he was supposed to do. And don't get me wrong, I mean, when you fighting, they not training and fighting and going through everything. All right, sorry, we had some technical difficulties. Um, but like I was saying it, before we got caught off, uh, they're not fighting, they're not going through um, all things they're going through to walk in the ring and just get beat. Like, these guys are training, they sacrifice sleep, dedication, running, and boxing or something, they're getting hit in the head, man. This, they're not coming out of play. I mean, now some people are outclassed. Some people do give up, which we'll talk about in a second. <laughs> but I would say the majority of fighters definitely have a dedication to the craft. So Mean Machine, um, he, he gave it his all. He was definitely prime. And, um, you know, for that, we salute him. We salute the fight we had last week. So um, what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick little break. And we're going to talk about, when we come back, we're going to talk about the top 10 welterweights who we have after last week's uh, action. Uh, also get into the Danny Jacobs versus Chavez Jr. fight. Also talk about the fights from last night, which was Charlo versus Harrison and also a Jabba. So stay tuned real quick. Um, we're going to be back in a minute. What's up, what's up, what's up? It's that time of the show where we kind of give a shout out to our sponsors. The sponsor today is Anchor. Anchor is everything you need to create your own podcast. You can use Anchor to distribute your show. They'll kind of get it out for you. And all you have to do is do it from your cell phone or your microphone, however you want to do it. But if you want to get your voice out there, if you want to talk to the people, there's no better place to do it than Anchor. So download the, the app, Anchor, or go to their website, anchor.com. It'll distribute your platform. It'll distribute your podcast on all platforms. So again, Anchor. All right, we back, we back. You can't play boxing. So, you know, we had a lot of fights over the past week. Um... You know, and what we're going to do right now is kind of dive in and tap into our top 10 welterweights. Uh, number 10, we got Udonis Ugas is number 10. Uh, he held down the spot. Number 9, we got Sergey Limpinets. You know what I'm saying? He was number 8 previously, but he moved down one spot. And he moved down one spot because we put in Mean Machine as number 8. And beyond that, really, the top 10 kind of stayed the same. Mike Garcia is still number seven. Danny Garcia. Oh, let's, let's back up. Mikey Garcia is going to fight Jesse Vargas on February 29th on The Zone. So that was something new that we found out um, over the last week. So we look forward to seeing how Mikey comes back from that Errol Spence beat down to happen. That'll be the, almost a year. So see if he has any effects from that. Um, number six, you know, we know Danny Garcia is going to fight in January, so we're going to see how that goes. Number five, we got Sean Porter, and now it's um, been rumored that him and Keith, uh, that him and um, Terrence Crawford could fight. I'll be looking forward to that fight if it happens. Um, I'm not holding my breath, but I would love to see that fight. Number four, we got Keith Thurman. Um, we haven't seen him since he fought our number three top 10 welterweight, which was Manny Pacquiao back in July. And number two, we got 
Terrence Crawford, who just fought last week against our number eight welterweight, which is Mean Machine. And number one, the guy we talked about earlier as far as the interview, which was Errol Spence Jr. Based on that interview, it looks like Errol Spence is coming back um, in the summer 2020. Says he wants to fight Danny Garcia if Danny Garcia wins, or he wants to fight Pacquiao. So we'll see how he looks when he comes back. So, um, like I said, we had a lot of fights in the last couple, in the last week or so. Uh, boxing really been in it with a bang. We had a fight Friday night out of Phoenix. We had Danny Jacobs, who uh, moved up to super middleweight, was fighting. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Oh, man. This dude has so many chances, bro. And he just he just really milked the game and really don't give a fuck about the game. Like, number one, if anybody knows the famous Julio Cesar Chavez, when he was getting ready to fight uh, Sergio Martinez, who is an all-time great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he wasn't fighting like a Friday night fights, tight fighter, a B level club like level fighter. He was fighting a great fighter. And during this HBO um 24-7, this man, instead of going to the gym, he says they rearranged furniture in his, in his living room and starts training in his living room. Not only does he do it, he has them record him doing that. Now, number one, if you're that lazy when you're doing that. You probably don't want to put it on 24-7 because not only do the public see it, but your opponent sees it. <sighs> but I don't think, I don't think Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is uh, the smartest person in the room. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't think he's the smartest person in the room. But he, he's been entitled, so he's been given a lot of chances because of what his dad has done, which is some sort of privilege right there. Now, don't get me wrong. I think when when Junior was um, at his best, he was a top 10, maybe top five middleweight, you know, at that time because he was putting in work for like a year. But I think he just, he doesn't have it to, he, he doesn't have that dog in him like his dad had dog in him. So he lost against Sergio Martinez. He he knocked him down in the 12th round, but he lost against that fight. He lost against Canelo. He's pretty much just been a quitter the last. He quit against Fanfara. So leading up to this Danny Jacobs fight, <laughs> he, uh, number one, he decides he doesn't want to be drug tested. So they move the fight to accommodate him. So that's another sense of entitlement. He has he signs a contract for a 168 limit, weight limit. He comes in at 173 and has to give up one million dollars of his, you know, of his three million dollar purse. So he has to give up one third of his purse. So, you know, he just he's very entitled, you know. He fights a good fight the first couple rounds. Danny Jacobs starts to figure him out in round round four, round five. And um, when the going gets tough, he quits because he feels like I don't have to do it. I mean, he's an entitled, he's an entitled little, you know, I'm not, he's an entitled <laughs> fighter at this point. He quits. The fans in Phoenix, they start throwing beer and all type of things in the ring is just a, a mess. So, you know, you lay down with people who don't respect the sport. The fans start not respecting the sport and it becomes a shit show. So I know he'll get another chance because he has a name regardless of all of that. He still kind of sold out an arena in Phoenix because those those fans that come see Jenny, they didn't come to see Danny Gar um, Jacobs. They came to see um, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And then if you see the look on his dad's face as he quits, he's like, man, how the fuck did this happen? Like, he's just so disappointed in his kid. But that's just um, that's how the cookie crumbles, man. So hopefully that's the last big name fight he'll get because he doesn't deserve it. 
he doesn't respect the sport and um it's not worth it for everybody involved so let's move on from that uh Danny J- Jacobs won because Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. he quit so uh, talking about the fights last night, we had a uh, co-main event. We had Ajaba, who's a big heavyweight out of Texas. He was fighting. I forgot the dude's name. But the guy, Ajaba is an um, up-and-coming prospect. Very raw. He's only been fighting about seven, eight years. Um, I think he's 25 years old, but he has power. Looks the part. But technically, he's not there. Um, his opponent, I forgot the guy's, Glaskowski, whatever. He's a tough heavyweight, but uh, it was a, a test fight. And, you know, showed a couple things. Number one, it showed Ajaba still leaves himself open. And he got wobbled a few times. So they should definitely still be careful with him because he's still raw. And a, a top-notch heavyweight or a top-10 heavyweight will drop him. Um, but it also showed that Jabba has power, but I don't think if he fights a top 10 heavyweight, the heavyweight knows how to avoid that power. He doesn't have power that he has power that can stop you, but he has to get to that power and you can, you can expose him before he gets to that power. Um, so a Jabba is a work in progress. He won, um, but still there's a lot of work to be done with the Jabba. The big fight was uh, Charlo versus Harrison. If you don't know, the fight happened last year where Charlo fought Harrison. Matter of fact, December 22nd last year in Brooklyn. Most people had Charlo winning the fight. I had Charlo winning, I think, not as wide as other people had. I had it like either 116, 112 or 115, 113 because a lot of those rounds are kind of close. But to everybody's surprise, Tony Harrison won. So uh, that loss really made Charlo mad. And um, they were supposed to have the rematch in June of 2020, but it didn't happen, you know? Uh, Harrison, he um, he hurt his ankle. Charlo says he believes he was faking, he calls him phony Harrison. So in the lead up to the fight, these two dudes really didn't like each other. Harrison is, uh, you know, a Detroit fighter. He doesn't back down for anybody. He's a slick fighter. His dad coaches him. Smart fighter. He doesn't have as much athletic ability that, uh, you know, that Charlo has. But he's a much smarter fighter than Charlo. But I'm going to tell you why I think he messed up, you know, in a second. <laughs> so stylistically... I always said this fight was going to come down to Charlo's athleticism can overpower Harrison's ring generalship and smarts. First round, Harrison was dictating. Second round, Charlo caught him with something. That's a glancing blow, but it was but he not he dropped Harrison. So right there, Harrison's behind the eight ball a little bit. The subsequent rounds, Harrison kind of settled in. He was definitely using his jab, using his ring generalship. And I think he won, he was winning a lot of those rounds. Some of those rounds were close, but I had I had Harrison up, you know, definitely by a couple rounds. What I noticed around round eight, nine, or around nine or ten, Harrison, I guess he he felt he was in control, which he was, like in control, but he starts to showboat. He starts to like start dancing with him. You know what I mean? He starts shimmying with him. And I know he's trying to do that because he's trying to convince the judges like, look, I got this in the bag because he's not going to be able to be more ferocious than Charlo. So he's trying to like show the judges I'm in control. This is my fight. But by you doing that, mentally, you are taking your foot off the gas just a little bit. And while he was in control, what happened in round 11, Charlo hit him with a big blow, wobbled him, dropped him. That blow was humongous. Once he dropped him, 
dropped him again in around 11. He dropped him again in around 11 that he thought, Harry, I mean, Charlo thought the fight was over. He got on the, he got on the turnbuckle and was like, it's over with. <laughs> but the, the referee let him go again. And then after Charlo kind of put a, a few more blows on him, he, uh, the referee, Jack Reese, stopped the fight. So Charlo got his belt back. It was a good fight. I think those two can fight all the time. It's going to be the same sort of result. Like, Harrison's going to always have more skills than him and be more smarter than him in the ring. But Charlo's going to be more um, athletic than, than him. And, um, you know, I think if I'm Charlo, and nah, I don't want to fight Harrison again because it's really nothing for me. I felt like I beat him the first time. I knocked him out the second time. So, yeah, we'll always have close fights, but there's no sense in me fighting him again. So it was a good fight. Like I said, we ended 2019 with a bang. Um, we're about to wrap up this episode. But before we do that, I'm going to let you know what we got in store. We got uh, we got some fights. Not some fights. We got some podcasts coming up. Uh, we're going to do a lot of the year-end podcasts and end of the decade. Because we're not only ending the year, but we ending a decade uh, going into 2020. So we're going to have po- upcoming podcasts as far as fighter of the year. I'm going to give you the top five fighters of the uh, top five fighters of 2019. I'm going to give you the top 10 fighters of 2010 decade of the, of the teens decade. Um, then we also go with the top five fights of 2019. I'm going to give you my list regarding that and then we'll also go over the top 10 fights of the decade so a few more podcasts coming up before we end the year remember check us out on instagram at you can't play boxing that's you say a n t p l a y b o x i n g also email us at and that's on instagram and uh, also email us at you can't play boxing at gmail.com so until the next few days, peace.